let's check out this area that over the years has been many, many different things. This enclosure made of poultry wire. Hey, Mr. Rooster back there. The scavenge gate. Rebar that I earned doing a consultation for a compost company. A hundred of them. And these black, uh, I guess they're bread shelves. I'm not too sure. Anyway, this area has been many things. Years ago, right here in the middle where I've got a newly planted loquat tree, was an experimental saltwater pond. I'd always wondered if I could possibly create a stable saltwater ecology, and it did not work. This area has also been a safe haven for young chicks until they got big enough to be safe with the older chicks. Um, it's been different gardens, uh, tomato gardens. What I did last winter, after we had all those hard freezes, I filled up this whole enclosure. Let me step back so you can see. I filled up this whole enclosure with a tremendous amount of freeze-killed cassava stalks and other stalks. Threw in some horse manure and let it rot down and break down. And then a few weeks ago, I took out the coarse material and flung in a little bit more horse uh, stall sweepings and planted these crops. And that's what I want to cover now. This crop here on the outside, these are young seedlings of a forage rape I've gotten very fond of called Bonar. And there's the tag back there, B-O-N-A-R. You can order the seeds from uh, the Welter Seed and Honey Company, I believe in Iowa. It was bred to feed the cattle. Um, it's got a very low mustard oil content, so it won't taint the milk. Very vigorous, ridiculously cold hardy. Uh, if I lived in Denver still, thank heavens I don't, but if I did, I would be growing this as an early spring crop. The flavor is exceptionally mild. Um, I've had uh, students and friends come out to the plants when they're mature, when they're about two feet tall, and just stand there and graze directly from the plant. I do very little gardening in the ground anymore because of the drought, but I went ahead and decided to take this whole area and try one last time to see if I can grow a lot of greens for the chickens and the ducks uh, without using too much water. Now inside this black mashed central area where the loquat tree is, I have another forage crop. It's a forage turnip called Barkant. Same thing, it was bred to be mild so as to not taint the cow's milk. The flavor and the texture is quite turnipy, uh, except very mild, no bitterness whatsoever. Um, and the growth habit is, resembles a turnip even though it does not form a turnip. If I shoot at this video, uh, another video like this in a couple months, you'll see that these Bonar babies are going to have a central stalk quite reminiscent of collards with the leaves coming off the stalk. But right now these babies are, gosh, they're not even, I don't even think they're two weeks old yet. But if you have a chance, uh, if you live in Florida uh, or a climate like Florida, just try growing Bonar and Barkant and the other forage rapes and forage um, turnips in the wintertime starting October, and you can sow them through February, but if you live in a snowy climate, uh, they would be a perfect early winter, uh, early spring crop, because they could take, I'm sure, repeat snowfalls. Anyway, Bonar, Barkant Turnip, and a wonderful multifunction functional area that this time is going to now be producing a tremendous amount of greens for my poultry. Have a good one, y'all. Bye-bye.